there are some roads and some locations that would benefit from like like you're saying, daily refreshes, in some cases, maybe even hourly, depending upon what's happening in that specific area. And then there's some other parts of the world where, you know, quite frankly, I think the, the freshness multiplier that we have right now, seven days, is too frequent. I mean, just think of like some random road in the middle of nowhere. Um, it just doesn't like it just doesn't change that much, right? And so, you know, doing that every week is kind of there's there's not a lot of value there. And so I do think that whole freshness multiplier needs to be done at a more micro level. Right now, it's just done on a global level. And so I, th- I do think that we'll introduce or recommend some protocol changes uh, around that such that it incentivizes freshness where it's really needed versus kind of just doing this blanket uh, a seven-day multiplier. Um, if you're mapping the area in the winter months, will snow uh, there be an incentive to cover that area again in the summer? Yeah, broad, broadly speaking, you know, it, de- it depends where you are in the world, kind of going back to the previous question, right? That there are certain locations in the world, you know, like that are dense, that are changing a lot, that are have a lot of economic activity where, you know, with snow, rain, fall, when, you know, all these kinds of seasons and all these different types of events that you just want to refresh it. The other factor here is, um, let's see, uh, there's there's a broader point here, which I think is interesting around like hurricanes and flooding and all of these different types of issues that are being caused by climate change, where different roads are being impacted and being able to identify those, identify the problem with them, um, identify how they're changing, shutting down, rerouting, all that kind of stuff is really interesting. Um, and so again, that's a good example of like where freshness is needed, you know, almost like an, on an hourly, weekly, you know, daily basis. Um, how do you find out what area needs to be mapping to earn more honey? Um, this is not going to make it into the V in, into the launch. Uh, but in the app, we ultimately see a, a role where you can actually say, hey, I'm going from point A to point B. Uh, give me a route that will earn me the most honey. You know, and then you're going to decide, like, okay, I got to get to my location quickly. So like, I can only take this road or, oh, I have an extra five minutes. I can maybe take this route. And so the app will kind of give you some choices in terms of identifying routes that could potentially earn you more honey. Um, okay, going back to saturation, how can we tell which areas are considered more saturated or less saturated? Um, so yes, the, the network explorer will help you, uh, see that, um, again, like you, so you'll see every region and then you'll see like all the different metrics that we are tracking by region. And so you'll be able to like quickly see like, okay, if a region is like knocking it out of the park, you know, has a lot of dash cam contributors, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it'll be really obvious, like, okay, there, there's not a lot of upside in terms of uh, mapping in that specific region. So you won't do it, right? Or you just, like, it, it wouldn't make sense. Again, like, we are a long, long way off, you know, before getting saturated. I think those, I understand where the questions and concerns are coming from. But, you know, if you're in this AMA chat, uh, and, you know, you're going to get out there and start mapping early. Like, this is not your biggest concern, right? Like, it'll take, I mean, depends what region of the world you're in. But, uh, you know, e- even if you're a big city like L.A. or Chicago or Austin or London or Paris or whatever, it will take some time to get saturated. Um How long after leaves of the network do you expect to have be having customers? Will you have customers a few months into mapping some cities? Uh, I mean, look, there's already customers who want the data that we've collected for the nine regions that we were in during the alpha period. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch, right? And so we'll sell them the map imagery that we have during the alpha phase. And they definitely say, okay, like, look, as you get to density into these other regions, we're also interested in that. I will caution folks, though, that like you have to build density in a region for it to be interesting. And what I mean by that is like 
you know, let's say a, a region has 100,000 road kilometers to be an interesting, if you only have, let's say, 5,000 road kilometers of the 100,000, it's just not that interesting um, I, from a customer perspective. And so you really got to get density, right? You know, like Manila has, uh, which was in one of our alpha regions, we have 100% coverage in Manila, right? Manila uh, at its peak was refreshing every single month, 70% of the Manila region. You know, LA was quite good as well. So, um, you know, it, 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 you've got to build density and it takes a little bit of time to build density. Uh, if I share a car with my family, will they be able to map without my phone in the car? The short, the short version to that question is no. So the phone needs to pair with the dash cam because all of the imagery and all the location data the dash cam generates is, is automatically transferred to your phone. And so your phone that you use with that dash cam needs to pair. Now, if they have their own phone, right, and they have the app, they could also pair it to that dash cam as well. So and you get, there's a way to do it where all of the tokens can go into the same wallet. Um, we'll show that to you guys. It's called token splitting. It's not going to be there, you know, at launch, but we will definitely introduce it. So you can route all of the various apps that are collecting uh, to the same um, to the same location or to the same wallet. Um, what data generated by a mapper have access for themselves? Imagery, video, path, tags, assets, etc. One will be the tag and be able to build. It, okay. Well, let me, there's two questions here. Let me answer the first one. So, data generated by a mapper. Uh, yes, if you have a, if you stick a thumb drive into the dash cam, then you get all the imagery that's all location tagged and all that kind of stuff, right? If you that's on the a high mapper dash cam. On the high mapper dash cam S, um, again, if you have a thumb drive, you get all the video uh, with all the location data, so you can like make paths and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know what you mean by tagged assets, so I'm not sure how to answer that one. Um, when will the tagging of items be available for earning honey and for potential purchase by customers? So um, you will be able to annotate, which is effective, which I think is what you mean by tagging. So annotating basically means it's, okay, there's um, a stop sign here, there's a bus stop there, all that kind of information, right? But what really forms a map ultimately. Uh, that will, the interface for that, it won't come until next year. So there's a whole kind of feature set that we need to build around that. Uh, and that will take some time to build. Um, you know, I think we have a good approach and a good design for that, but you got to go build it. Um, and that's going to take a little bit of time. So, you know, I, I don't imagine that contributors will start earning for that until probably Q2 of next year. And then, you know, add an additional six to seven months beyond that for customers actually purchasing and using that data. Uh, what happens if my phone dies while mapping? What's the good or whenever it was mapped once I get home to Wi-Fi? Okay, that is a good question. So um, if your phone dies while mapping, uh, it will store the imagery on the actual dash cam. There is a finite amount of storage that's on the dash cam. Um, and once that fills up, then that's it, right? We will start to overwrite it. So, you, you know, there, this, the worst case scenario is your phone dies while mapping, um, and you, uh, you know, you then drive, let's say, I don't know, another eight, 10, 15 hours with no phone at all. There is a scenario in there where you will not get credit for some amount of that drive because you just build up the hard drive or the storage that's on board. But let's say you know you you are your phone dies and you're let's say only mapping for thirty minutes after that, um, you should be fine. It'll like once your phone reconnects to your dash cam, it'll just move all that data off. Uh, and then, yeah, when you get home to your Wi-Fi, it'll just, you know, upload it all. So you should be fine. 
Um, yeah, so there were nine cities in the alpha. So there were, that was a, started about a year and a half ago. Um, and um, there was, uh, we can share the data with you, but there were nine cities, about four or five of them in the US, four or five outside the US. Um, and, uh, you know, there were definitely just a tremendous amount of learnings. So we kind of know what works, what doesn't work, why it works, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the tiny hive contributors is unrelated to the alpha. The tiny hive is much more about hardware testing than it is about testing how maps are built and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, unrelated milestones. Um, okay, this is a good question. How much store space should a phone have available for each mapping hour? We're going to publish some data on this because we're seeing the data right now as we go around and test. And so we will provide people very, very specific information about this. If I just did it right now verbally, A, I don't think most people would like, you know, be writing it down uh, and B, people will probably forget it if they weren't writing it down. So this is a, an important thing that the team here will publish so you everybody knows. Um, and by the way, this is configurable, right? So, you know, let's say you have like a lot of storage. Let's say you have like, you know, 80 free gigabytes of data on your device, but you only want to allocate, let's say, 30 of those free gigabytes to Hive Mapper. You can do that. Like there's a setting in the app where you can actually do that. Yeah, so similar kind of question over here in terms of like one kilometer, how much data does that generate? Oh, sorry, this, okay. Uh, can we have an idea of how much data that generates for helium or symbiosis? Like if you're driving one kilometer. Uh, uh, I don't know the, like you're talking about, I, I think what this is trying to ask is like, in terms of helium data credits, how much helium data credits is this generating for helium? Uh, I don't have that uh, that piece of information off the top of my head. It's not a ton, um, but I can give you a, a more specific answer. Okay. Um, there's a lot of questions in this next one, so I'm going to try to take them one at a time uh, in the last couple of minutes that we have here. Um, if a customer wants cryptographic proof for the imagery of metadata, can you provide it? Um, we cannot provide cryptographic proof. Well, that's not entirely accurate because we do actually, um, it, de it depends how you're defining cryptographic proof in this specific context. Um, we can definitely verify that the imagery metadata hasn't been tampered with. Um, that we can definitely do. Um, the other part of this is we can do you go even further and say like, you know, our confidence interval on the, uh, the, the location of this driver is X. Um, and that has to do with, you know, GPS, that has to do with the, using the helium for location verification, triangulation. So there are some things that we can do that. Um, we do not, so, um, we do not sign data with a private key to store in hardware and shared in public keys in public, no. So we like all that data is not technically signed in the way I think that you're asking here. Um, and we don't feel that's necessary, but we can come back to that if people feel like that's important. Where do you store the data, Web 2 or Web 3 infrastructure? So I think there's two different, there's two different things here. There's, there's map data, like ma imagery is map data, right? There's all the different annotations uh, that we then pull out of the imagery. All of that is stored in Web2 infrastructure at the very moment. We may move that over to a Web3 data storage infrastructure. Um, I think that's interesting. Uh, then there's all the transactions that are related to mapping, right? Who mapped what? When did they map? Where, where did not? What did they map? How much are tokens that they earn? You know, all of that kind of stuff. 
Um, that is all stored on the blockchain, uh, publicly accessible. Um, it's all will be in the network explorer. You're able to then go and dive even deeper onto the Solana network explorer to see all those two different transactions. Uh, and everything, everything related to collection. So that means all the dash cam, uh, the, all the all the source code that runs on the dash cam, all the contributor app, uh, network explorer, um, you know, all of the backend processing of the map, what we refer to as Titan, uh, that it will all be open source. Um, so we can get like, if you want to go deeper into like a whole bunch of security stuff that we do related to ensuring that this contributor is actually contributing from a very specific location. Uh, there's a whole set of things that we'll uh, share on the security side as well as the privacy side related to that. Um, so far during testing, has there been any issues running other mining apps along with the hive map at the same time? I mean, to be, you, I'm not aware of, of anybody who's actively testing this, so I can't answer that, but I think it'd be interesting to test. Um, we should definitely add that. And if there's some specific apps that you think are interesting to test alongside a hive mapper, uh, that could be interesting. Um, if I have a front and side facing camera, will I need more than one phone? Yes, one phone per dash cam. I thought, oh, Alex answered that. Thank you, Alex. Um, does my phone need interconnection while mapping or is Wi-Fi when I come home enough? Okay, so there's a lot of confusion around this topic. I want to try to like, um, so your phone only needs internet connection while mapping for the part for a very, very, very limited number of use cases. It is not moving by default. It is not moving any of the location data and imagery that the dash cam is collecting through a cellular internet connection. That's not what's happening. Uh, by default, it will only move and transfer all of the dash cam imagery um, that, that, that has been moved to the phone um, through uh, Wi-Fi when you're at home or in the office or something like that, right? Um, you can, I think there's now features in the app where if you happen to be offline, right, you're in the middle of nowhere, you don't have cellular connection, you can continue to map. So I think we added those features. I'm almost certain they're there. Uh, if not, they're, they're not that hard to add. Um, so you don't need like 100% of the time internet connection, cellular connection while you're mapping. You kind of, you know, when you come back home, get Wi-Fi. Uh, so the next question is around just like honey, local, you know, converting to a local currency. Those are all like questions related to, um, you know, things that we can't answer or talk about. Um, all right. I saw, I saw, uh, saw the follow-up question. We'll, we'll get to that. Um, okay, guys, this has been awesome, awesome as always. Lo like there was a couple questions I think we need to follow up on here. Uh, I think Alex took some notes. Um, we will definitely follow up with everybody, but the exciting thing is, is that like, we are now preparing to what we refer to as land this plane. So what that basically means is how do we launch the thing? Uh, and, uh, we're getting closer. So September 19th is when we start testnet. You'll be hearing about us, about launching and when that is, uh, we're looking at some dates in November, um, and so, you know, assuming all goes well with testnet that we're feeling really good about right now, um, the launch is, uh, is on the horizon. We can all see the light at the end of the tunnel and I really appreciate all the enthusiasm, all the great questions. Uh, and you know, let's go. I think somebody wrote here, let's go. And that's, that's exactly what I feel like is like, I just want to get out there, you know, get all these dash cams out there all over the world. Um, you know, so that we can start building maps. So thank you guys, thank you. And that concludes our fifth AMA with Ariel. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for the questions. If you haven't filled out the form for the giveaway, go ahead and do so. Um, and yeah, just thank you for joining. Um, we'll be answering some questions, leaving the chat open for a few more minutes, but um, yeah, other questions, move them to general chat.
once this concludes. And thank you all.